What's going on, smart people? If you're a physics major, you sometimes have to deal with insanely large and ridiculously small numbers. And I'm talking astronomically large or small. And I started thinking, and I can't speak for any other country but my own, and even for my country, I'm gonna be generalizing a little bit. Hell, if you're an American and in STEM, then this probably already doesn't apply to you. But when it comes to the general public, I don't think Americans are usually equipped to really handle and internalize these vastly large numbers in a way to where it really means something. At least in a physics context, there's a clear limitation in the units that we're comfortable using that reveals itself when you try to extend it to representing numbers on say the cosmic or quantum scale. Now for this video I'm going to be focusing on really large numbers because for small numbers the argument's pretty much the same. You know normally the reciprocal of a large number is a very small number. But let's talk about units real quick. When it comes to say distances we pretty much have inches, feet, yards, and miles. There's 12 inches in a foot, 3 feet in a yard, and 1,760 yards in a mile for some reason. And when distances are a good amount smaller than a mile, we tend to think of them in terms of distances. You say, how far is 65 feet? You might point and say, it's about over there. It's by that building. But once you start getting to the distance scale of about a mile, we think of distances in terms of how long it would take to get there. You know, we say five miles on the highway, that's about a five minute drive. And I think that this is useful. It's a coping mechanism for when you can't appreciate a quantity at face value. So you associate it with something else that may even have different units, and in this case, time. But then if we start to consider something like speeds, our flexibility and the units that we use collapses to one thing, miles per hour. Sure, if you're an athlete, you might appreciate something like 100 yard dash time, so you might be more comfortable with like yards per second, but the only unit we all truly hold stock in is miles per hour. And it doesn't matter which extreme, if you're walking two miles per hour or flying 600, we can grapple with and understand everyday speeds in terms of MPH. And personally, I think that miles per hour is an extremely functional unit, considering we have a sense of intuition for both slow and fast speeds, all in term of the same unit of measurement. So really, for everyday life, I don't see anything wrong with the units that we use, until you want to communicate with someone who, say, does physics or engineering. For physicists, they think generally, especially theorists. There's an inverse relationship between this and that, but this is constrained by what that can be, and that is determined by experiment, which is governed by this equation. And in my experience, people don't want qualitative behavior and equations talked at them. They want numbers, or they think they do. But let's consider a rather large quantity dealt with in physics, the speed of light in a vacuum. Now in SI units, meaning the units that any physics student would be using, the speed of light is about 300 million meters per second. And already, that would mean nothing to most Americans. For one, meters is a no-no. Two, even if it was miles, it needs to be miles per hour, not miles per second. But let's convert and see. I'm going to have the actual numbers down here, but I'm going to do some rounding so that I can still do the math in my head. But if you convert to miles per second, the speed of light is about 186,282 miles per second. I'm going to call that 200,000 miles per second. There's 3,600 seconds in an hour. Let's call that 3,500. So then you have 200,000, so 2 to the 5th times 3.5 to the third, so the speed of light is a bit under 700 million miles per hour. So you put the ball in our court and throw 700 million miles per hour in our face, and it's, it's in our unit and it still means nothing. It's fast. It's really fast, but there's no measuring stick or analogy that you can compare that kind of speed to. And this might be the same in other countries. I don't know. I just didn't want to make assumptions about how other countries think. But you take the physicist who recognizes that people don't want to see equations, they want numbers. They give it to you in the units that you're comfortable with, and you still might as well have said a bajillion miles per hour. It's just another big number. So there can be this huge disconnect between those conducting the research and those who are just trying to be informed. And for me, being a recent physics graduate, I was able to learn to comprehend these large numbers just by widening the range of units I'm comfortable using. Then, for example, you can even use that coping mechanism of associating distance with the time it takes to traverse it again. As an example, if instead of fixating on miles per hour, we allowed ourselves to consider things that can move miles in a second, then taking the speed of light as an example, which is 186,282 miles per second, which still doesn't mean much at face value, I'll admit that, but now we can introduce a measuring stick for context. Coast to coast, the United States is a bit under 3,000 miles. Now, let's round down and say that the speed of light is about 180,000 miles per second. That means that light could travel from one end of the U.S. to the other over 60 times in one second. 
So if light has the speed to travel past the US in a little under a 60th of a second, and considering a minute is a 60th of an hour, and a second is a 60th of a minute, we could create a whole new denomination of time based off of how fast light is. We could call it the weta, so it'd be weta second minute hour. Or you could think of the speed of light in terms of how fast it could go from one coast to the other and back again, which would be over 30 times a second. I can't even do this 30 times a second. But now I have a way of wrapping my head around a speed that large, and now I can appreciate how hard it would be to get something to travel even remotely that fast. So if you widen the scope of units that you're fluent in using, or at least get comfortable in converting between them, that alone can help make you a more scientifically literate person. And now, let's talk about small numbers. <laughs> Just kidding, yeah, I think you get the point. But thank you for watching. If you're from another country, feel free to let me know in the comments section how this may or may not apply to yours. I have this sneaking suspicion that it's not unique to America. So feel free to weigh in below, and I'll see you guys there.